are the lines between documentary and reality TV blurring? Are journalistic intentions being superseded by the product becoming entertainment first? Perhaps, perhaps, perhaps. But one thing I know is that this glut of documentaries has given us an enormous amount of glorious, wonderful shit. Thank you, soldier. Yeah. Thank you, soldier. Thank you, soldier. I thank you because you saved me. Thank you, soldier. Thank you, soldier. Demand for documentaries has shut up 186% since the beginning of 2019. Production has increased by 77%. Recently, a Hollywood Reporter article featuring comment from acclaimed documentarians such as Ken Burns and Alex Gibney more or less pondered what this means for documentary as a genre. Could more documentaries, but of lesser quality, actually be detrimental to documentaries being a reliable conduit of information. Exactly. You know, I don't care. Like, listen, that's more. Like, there's so much. Like, everyone's like, Ugh. like, we're on vacation. So, with the increased audience for the genre, there has inevitably been an increase in dross looking to capitalize on things. Documentaries take all shapes and forms. But what really kicked off this new appetite among the so-called general audience were series such as Making a Murderer and Tiger King. The first is a serious and dour affair, charting murder investigations and trials over many years. The latter explores the rise and fall of numerous uh, eccentric dealers of exotic animals. They're not entirely dissimilar. One is investigative, the other is more reportive, but key to their success is that they took years to make, at least in terms of acquiring footage. But also, their subject matter is not easily replicable in terms of its depth. You can make a documentary about a niche of weirdos, but Tiger King has layers of weirdos, doing and saying weird and memeable things. The Stephen Avery case is genuinely intriguing. The producers don't need to make a standard turn of events feel like a twist, because there are actual twists. There is a demand for investigative and powerful documentaries that make you feel miserable, like Atomic Homefront, about radioactive waste in a St. Louis dump the government could not care less about. And there always will be demand for those things. I have three other children at home sick, and you want to live here? You honestly want to live here? <laughs> because I can't physically bury another child. But those stories that should be told, and should be told over hours and hours, are really few and far between. Glossy, entertainment-focused documentaries, such as The Real Bling Ring, which has really very little to say beyond salacious details of celebrity lives, surely makes more people watch documentaries. And that might mean something if you're filling quotas. But the latter doesn't threaten the first. You could differentiate documentaries between the journalistic and the infotainment, the real and the bullshit. Surely, if the bullshit pulls a filmmaker from the real, or perhaps better, the meaningful, they had no business there in the first place. But honestly, something like the real bling ring is up front in how it presents itself at least. This is going to be vapid, it's not going to be deep, but you can have it on while you play Minesweeper, and it actually does offer a window into selfishness and delusion, although there are plenty of those. Perhaps even more interesting are the TV series made by people with no passion for the subject matter, or really for TV or documentary at all, people just doing it as a job. You know, um, not documentarians, um, professionals. And there's no professional like David Foster. Music man, serial husband, the smell of aftershave on car leather. In his documentary, which is a fascinating biopic following his rise from gifted child to all-round great guy and friend of Stevie Wonder, he gives us some incredibly humble lines. In all modesty, 
I killed it. You know how Roman and Greek statues are often presented as the standard of refined art, as graceful and sophisticated, as subtle and meaningful. But then it turns out they were all painted to simulate real life, and before they all faded to their original marble, they all looked like the gaudy concrete bollocks you get at the garden centre. Well, David Foster is that if it was all smeared in human shit. Speaking of human shit, oh man, I have to stop saying that. Speaking of human shit, a bit harsh, who are we talking about? Hype House. Hmm. I was out the other day and I was saying to somebody, do you know what the difference between the Taliban and the people of Hype House is? And they said no. And I said, don't you know the difference? And they said no. And I said, the difference is beans on feet. Hype House. The Netflix series about some tick spits talkers all pretending to live in a house together, it's actually remarkable in its fluff to juice ratio. I'd say it's the reality doc version of a hot dog, but it's more akin to expecting a water impacted food tube, but just getting papier mache. It's the glitz version of a sawdust sandwich. Compare this to Exhibit A, which also pretends to be about something, but really isn't. Ostensibly a look at how forensic evidence isn't infallible after all, it is a bit about that, but more just about, you know, whatever. Video analysis, or blood pattern, or whatever we could get hold of and stretch. It does have an amazing amateur rap though. Can't ride down the road without getting harassed by the police, getting disrespected by people, and spit upon. Soldier, I thank you. These things know what they should be about. They probably were meant to be about them but the camera crew failed to get them or they just did not materialize. And that is fine, that happens. That is part of the risk of doing these things. Once, they would have shelved things like this, but why do that when people will watch them anyway? But the medium is the message. The message is white noise. What's there to really say? Look at these vain plastic people we have fetishized and revel in their despair. The system is flawed, and law enforcement is to be feared. Here is something, it is better than nothing. Don't fuck with cats, because you like cats. And there was this guy who killed these cats, on the internet, attracting the attention of outraged cyber sleuths. That man later killed another man. The cyber sleuths were in no way part of anything. But, you know, there are things people relate to there. Being online, Watching nonsense, 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 fire within the fire, burning, the actual burning fire was on fire as well, it was incredibly hot, and the heat was just going over. I'm Gio Benitez, and this is I Survived a Crime. Oh my goodness, well it does what it says on the tin, and it certainly is interesting watching host Geo deteriorate through what is obviously a single block 18 hour shoot. Hardest $465 he's ever made. I was married to Patton Oswalt, actually named I'll Be Gone in the Dark, probably isn't more self-serving than Foster, David Foster, but its mis-selling is far more egregious. At least with that douchery, it's clear what it is in 30 seconds. I'll Be Gone in the Dark is meant to be about the Golden State serial killings, but really, it's about the book of the same name, written by Patton Oswalt's wife. Not the wife he's married to in the interviews he's giving, the wife before, who died from an overdose of drugs, he not only supplied her, but recorded himself supplying her. If she hadn't died, this hours-long series would not have been made, because the only noteworthy thing Wife 1 contributed to the case was coining its name. She was nowhere near identifying the killer, who has since been caught thanks to an extensive FBI genealogy-led investigation that had nothing to do with the dearly departed. But I believe it's the rare moments when he was human that will be his downfall in the end. As a true crime documentary, it is utterly awful. A genuinely interesting series of hyper-violent crimes take a back seat to fluff about the author's hubris 
and salacious pulp. But, on the other hand, it's very interesting in a different way. I mean, if you have an interest in the manifestation of ego and denial through consumer product. Which I fucking do. Contrast this to something like There's Something Wrong With Aunt Diane. It's about a woman who, still shit-faced from the night before, drove her car the wrong way down the freeway, killing herself, several of her young nieces and nephews, and several people in the car that she hit. Really, it's about narcissism too. It's just not made at the behest of one. It's made carefully, and almost always attempts to be objective. In Diane's husband, who was with her the night before the crash, you can see the same sort of denial as you see with Oswald. But in this documentary, that's a theme consciously explored by the filmmakers. But still, even unintentionally, the Oswald doc is so revealing. So, I suppose what I'm saying is, is that even in the trash that is just made for money, there is value, not necessarily, and certainly not primarily in their intent. Hulu's documentary on Erica Girardi was so lazy and so light on information, in terms of its subject, it's basically worthless. But in terms of looking into the facsimiles of the talking head souls, and considering why they're there, in terms of wondering why such a failure of a product not only exists, but was even screened. Well, it tells us something, I suppose. Also, there was a clip in the Army Hammer 100% Sausage documentary where he's talking to Stephen Colbert about how hard it was to grow up with the name Armand. And what's so bad about being called Armand? Armand. He says, it's a long name for a kid. That doesn't make any sense. Was it because kids were like, oh, your name is Armand. Like the nut. Armand Hammer. Nutcracker. I mean, at least your name's not Peanut. Peanuts. There's a joke. Nothing to do with peas. One of us has had a stroke. God save King Sausage Fingers. Perhaps also you've been wondering where Collaborator is. Well... Don't worry at all about that. Rest assured, it, it's coming very soon. Although it's shit. So, 